News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Five life terms for a Hamilton child rapist. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Thursday, September 17th. 2015. Right now the sky is cloudy. It's a little chilly out there. We have 39 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Missoula Nissan Hyundai. Drive what you want affordably. Stop by and find out how leasing may be your best deal on a new car. A judge has sentenced a Hamilton man to five consecutive life terms after a jury convicted him of raping five girls between the ages of 12 and 15. District Judge Jeffrey Langton also sentenced 45-year-old Brad Daffin to two 100-year prison terms for two drug convictions yesterday. The Valley Republic reports a jury convicted Daffin in June. He was arrested in January of 2014 after a 13-year-old girl and a 14-year-old girl reported Daffin forced them to have sex with him over the course of a year. Three others came forward saying Daffin gave them drugs in exchange for sex when they were between the ages of 12 and 15. Two said Daffin paid them to recruit other girls for sex. Daffin maintained his innocence. His attorney says he plans to appeal. A trucker from Great Falls, 56-year-old John Jacob Fishbaugh, appeared in Missoula Justice Court yesterday, charged with felony sexual intercourse without consent and sexual assault of a 9-year-old girl. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Celine Kepke asked Judge Karen Orzek for $200,000 bail. The defendant isolated and sexually abused his girlfriend's granddaughter during a long-haul trucking trip for his job that the victim was accompanying him on. The defendant did this multiple times throughout the trip and then attempted to blame the victim for climbing into bed naked with him. Kepke expanded on the allegations against the defendant. The defendant also apparently saw no issue with sleeping naked with his with the nine-year-old victim, nor with taking showers with her. State also believes that the defendant is a risk of failure to reappear. The defendant's work takes him out of state frequently, meaning that it will be difficult to keep tabs on him if he is released. Both charges carry a possible penalty of 100 years to life in prison with a maximum fine of $50,000 each. The Montana Supreme Court has upheld a man's conviction for strangling his ex-wife and throwing her body in the Yellowstone River. The court ruled Tuesday there was ample evidence of Walter Larson Jr.'s guilt and that he did not make a confession. During an interrogation, a district court judge declined to suppress. Larson serving 110 years in prison with the 2008 death of his ex-wife, Susan Casey of Glendive. Two-year-old Haley Dunbar Blanchette of Sweetgrass, Montana, was allegedly murdered along with her father by a man identified as Derek Soretsky in Blairmore, Alberta, Canada. Corporal Sharon Franks with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Public Affairs Division has details. Derek James Soretsky, he's a 22-year-old from the Blairmore area as well. He has since been charged with first-degree murder in relation to Terry Blanchette, which is the father to Haley, as well as the murder of two-year-old Haley Dunbar Blanchette. Franks added that Soretsky was also charged with an additional felony, indignity to a body. If someone is deceased and you were to touch the body or you were to move a body, it, that would be part of that charge. As to what the grounds are for laying this charge on this particular case, I'm not certain of all the details with respect to that. But indignity to a body can mean a number of things in relation to the Canadian law. Franks thanked all the media outlets and social media contacts that spread the word about the Amber Alert and the effort to find Haley. A man out on parole after serving time in prison for driving drunk and killing a teacher in a northern Montana crash is now back in jail on more drug charges. The Daily Interlake newspaper reports Jason DeShazer appeared in court on the drug charges Monday. He remained jailed Tuesday on $10,000 bond. The 32-year-old man had been given a 10-year sentence after killing Summers teacher Don Bowker in a 2006 crash. The state of Montana has put a new weed at the top of its noxious weed priority list. Here's weed program manager Dave Birch. We did add common reed, which is also uh, called Frankmites. We added that to our priority 1A list. We have uh, There's a lot of common, uh, common reed, but uh, native common reed in the state. But there are some invasives coming in as well. And we found one patch of invasives up in the Hill County area. Non-native common reed can grow up to 16 feet tall and spread along riparian areas, blocking the sunlight from other native plants. Authorities have put it at the highest level of risk, a class it only has two other noxious weeds. We have them listed as yellow star thistle, which, knock on wood, we don't have any in the state or we haven't had any sightings for the last three years. Um, Dyer's woad, uh, which is a 
real bad plant, especially in Utah and Idaho now, and then common reed. States like Nebraska and Wyoming have huge problems with it. It just completely crowds out everything. The state of Montana also added some aquarium plants to its Priority 3 list, which means the, they will be regulated and prevented from sale. Birch said the aquarium plants pose a risk if they're dumped out into Montana waterways. It's no secret that Montana is full of wildlife, but a new study by Statewide Insurance shows that the rate of car crashes involving animals is at an all-time high. Statewide Insurance spokeswoman Angela Thorpe explains. Montana kind of always sticks in the top ten. It's no surprise to listeners, but this year they moved from third place last year up to second place again this year, and that's been a 19% um, increase in the likelihood they're going to collide with a deer or moose or elk. The data for the studies collected from insurance claims in each state. Montana ranked third in the study last year when just one out of 75 drivers were expected to collide with an animal. Now those odds are worse. When we look at those odds, it really comes out to be about one out of 63 cars in Montana that will collide with, a, with wildlife. So last year, there were about 11,000 claims that were estimated. But then when we look at this year, it's climbed slightly to about 12,200 claims. Over the past decade, Montana's climbed from being the ninth most likely state for deer collisions to number two. But never before has the chance of hitting a deer been as high as predicted for this year. According to State Farm statistics, most deer collision claims are filed in October, November, and December. The Taiwan Flour Mills Association has agreed to purchase 1.7 million tons of U.S. wheat over the next two years, much of which will come from Montana. The Billings Gazette newspaper reports the association committed to the purchase yesterday while meeting with state lawmakers in Washington, D.C. Officials say the deal is worth $544 million. Taiwan purchases, purchases rather roughly 441,000 tons of wheat from Montana annually. The delegation is scheduled to visit Montana. Idaho, and Kansas. Our News Talk time now is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy skies today with a chance of showers and a possible thunderstorm. Highs will be in the mid-50s. Tonight, showers early. Lows drop into the low 40s. We'll see our temperatures Friday close to the 60-degree mark, 70s for the weekend. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.